Hey guys, what's going on? It's Gunner here. Welcome back to the channel. As you can see here today, I'm standing in a beautiful lush rye plot. But the main thing that I wanted to talk about today is the water retention benefits of using a cover crop like winter rye here. Now there's a few different varieties that you can plant to get these benefits. Buckwheat is one, winter rye is another. Those are the two that I've used that I could speak on that work great. Now I can't wait to show you guys this up close, but basically what I can see here is a good, rich, dark chocolate, damp soil. And if I go 50 yards to my left up into this tilled cornfield, it's bone dry, I'll kick up dust. This is so drastic a difference in moisture retention that I can't even explain it. Now, as you can see, this is gonna come up probably chest high on me by the time I crimp this over, but the benefits of doing this and, and having this winter rye or a buckwheat is when you plant your next seed, it's getting a jump start on everything else just because of the sheer amount of moisture that's right at the topsoil level. You're not requiring a rain right after you plant. Now the conventional practice when it comes to food plotting, I would say is spray, 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 till plant in the fall. Now there's a lot better options than spray, 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 till plant. Because what you're doing when you're spraying all summer is you're basically binding up all your nutrients that are bioavailable within your soil. So Roundup is known to be a mineral chelator that binds minerals so they are not available to the plants that you therefore seed into that ground. So that's the first thing. Guys, it's gonna look. A lot of you guys have been talking to me, telling me how you need help. Well, I wanna talk to you today about whitetail coaching. One-on-one -on -one virtual coaching with me. We'll go in depth on whatever problems, whatever help you need, we'll find the solution you're looking for. Shoot me a text, 608-632-7233, 608-632-7233. I got your back for life. Now let's get back to the video. The second thing is, is you're allowing your soil to sit barren and allowing that to bake in the sunlight, which is sterilizing it from the UV of the sun. The ground, the earth is meant to have things growing. There's a reason in the woods, there's always something growing when it's growing season. The earth is meant to have something growing on the ground at all times, besides the winter time when everything's dormant. But then the third thing is gonna be you're allowing that soil to completely dry out. You don't have any active root systems on that soil retaining any of the moisture. So any moisture you get, it's probably either going to erode your topsoil or it's just gonna eradicate through that soil so fast because there's nothing holding it back and using that. When you have an active root system or a living plant within that soil, if I pull up one of these clumps here, you can see it's holding soil right there in this root system, it's using that moisture and it's holding it right in this root system, that top inch and a half or two inches so that it can stay moist and continue to grow and mature. Now that's just a handful of the things that rye does. Now, not to mention the biomass and the organic matter that I'm adding when I crimp this over and I terminate this. This is all just going to rot back into the soil. So anything it's pulling up from my soil is just going right back in in the form of organic matter, rotting organic matter. So all of those nutrients are then therefore available in the years to come for my fall blend. So basically the plans with my food plotting system is going to be rye, cereal rye in the fall, top dressing everything with cereal rye, allowing it to come up and mature once it hits sexual maturity, crimp that over, either plant more rye, potentially some crimson clover to add nitrogen, I'm gonna play around with a few different blends when it comes to my food plotting system here this year because, because I'm looking for the best possible way to create the best soil along with the most nutrient dense, nutrient rich food plots for the cheapest cost possible. Now, when we're talking about rye being cheap, you don't get much cheaper. And buckwheat over the last few years has just skyrocketed in price. That's why I'm going to this winter rye system because anybody that is doing the food plots, we're not harvesting any of these crops. We want cheap and we want efficient and we want something that's gonna work. So it's pretty hard to mess up cereal rye. This stuff grows just about anywhere. Now, when we get up into the, the ag field here, I've got some strips that I planted into our standing crop for late season hunting last fall. And you can see how 
beautiful that's growing and that was shaded out by the standing corn. So this stuff grows excellently and it, it doesn't need full sun. So this stuff is absolutely tremendous for the purpose that I'm using it for. Now I've got some brassicas and I've got some radishes coming up here still in this food plot from either seeds not germinating last fall because of dry weather or just a mild winter and some of the seeds just didn't die off or some of the plants didn't die off. So I've got some volunteer brassicas coming back up, which I'm all for. I'm just adding more organic matter with those. I'm gonna allow those to come up with that rye. And when I go in and terminate that rye, I'll just terminate them at the same time. And another thing that I can add into one of my cover crop blends across the summer months here is tillage radish. It creates a lot of organic matter. It mines deep. It digs down for those nutrients deep in the soil. It grows a tube. Those tillage radishes can get 10 inches. So it's basically acting as a natural tiller. It's breaking up my soil without me having to go in and disturb it. And at the same time, I have a living plant in there retaining moisture, providing shade to my soil and building organic matter. So I wanted to show you guys that here today is this is excellent. This is exactly what I'm looking for. I'll show you a close up of exactly how rich and how moisture filled this soil is strictly because it's got the UV protection. It's got the sun protection. It's not drying out. It's got an active root system here. It's holding the moisture, the rain that we do get, it's holding it in that top two inches because that root system is so excellent. And it's providing weed suppression. I had a pigweed problem with this plot the last three years. I don't see one single pigweed coming up right now. That aleopathic rye is naturally suppressing that weed competition. This is already belly button high on me. There's not a lot of sunlight getting to the ground level right now. So a lot of these weeds, this competition is not going to take off. It's not gonna have the opportunity to take off. So this is just a few of the things. This moisture retention that I'm seeing out of this rye is absolutely mind blowing. This is something that everybody can use. If you simply plant cereal rye into your fall blend, cover that entire plot, this stuff comes right back up in the springtime and you don't have to do any work in the springtime. All you do is control this and manage it when it gets to that doughy stage when it starts to sexually mature and it seeds out. Now, this rye seeding out is not the end of the world because I'm just gonna plant more in this fall and it's a highly attractive food source for whitetail. So if I have rye in here, I, I don't really care. If I have some rye seeding out, that's not the end of the world for me. So I'm really enjoying what I'm seeing right now. This is excellent. I love all the moisture in the soil. It's been 70 degrees the last few days full sun. Like I said, I'm going to show you guys that that cornfield up there. If I kick the dirt, it's going to kick dust. That's how dry that is because it's been tilled under. There's nothing growing there. Now where there's rye growing, I guarantee you it's going to be a lot more moist. It's going to be a lot denser. It's going to look better in the soil, a lot more moisture right in that top two inches. And I'm actually really interested in going up and, and kind of investigating that because I haven't even looked at it yet. But this is exactly what I want to see. I want to see good weed suppression, good excellent growth on these rye plants, a lot of moisture retention, and that good root system holding all of that moisture right at the top two inches. So when I come in here and I plant right back into this, all the moisture within the stalks just going right back down in. Now for a fall blend, this rye, you might want to manage it a little tighter to the ground just so it doesn't have so much stock to fill up with water and, and strip water out of the soil. But as of right now, I'm trying to control this pigweed problem. So I want as much shade at my soil level as possible. Once I get that pigweed under control, maybe I'll manage it a little tighter to the ground to try to hold some of that moisture in the ground and not in this stalk. So like I said, all of you guys can implement this. It's a very simple routine of, of using cover crops within your food plots. And I can guarantee you that this stuff's gonna provide a lot of organic matter and a lot of moisture. And I drill my summer cover crop in here to create a lot of organic matter, mine nitrogen, add back what I've been stripping and pulling from these food plots over the last few years with a lot of that brassica that's gotten eaten. So wanted to show you guys that. Let's hop up into the cornfield and we'll take a look at that. All right, so now here we are. We're out in the, the cornfield here. But if you guys can see this, I'm gonna lean over here and touch some of this dirt. This is rock hard. I mean, this is bone dry dirt. It looks horrible. As I threw it, you could see that dust coming off. There's no moisture left in the soil because it's been sitting here baking with nothing growing in it. Now around me here, you can see 
we top dressed this standing corn for late season with a bunch of rye. Now, it's not necessarily as thick as, say, my food plot because it's tough to get your proper pounds per acre when you're walking through corn stalks and that standing corn. So you can't be exactly certain on what you're spreading, where you're hitting. But as you can see, it's pretty good and thick through here. I'm just leaning over here and in the spots that it's shaded nicely, I'm grabbing some of this soil and I can feel that moisture in it. It's nowhere near as dry as this stuff right here. I mean, this is just a crust of dry dirt. I'll get a close up of this for you guys, but you can completely see the difference of what having that root system, that shade from the sun does when it comes to retaining moisture. It's night and day difference. So I wanted to kind of give you guys that example that this cover crop stuff, there's something here. I mean, there's been studies where it's improved yields. Gary Zimmer is uh, a guy, a regenerative agriculture farmer that he's done a lot of research on this. His company, Midwestern Bioag, they have a lot of cool products coming out, but I've heard him speak multiple times and all of this stuff makes perfect sense. He's using a mix of crimson clover or red clover every other year with a winter rye cover crop, going ahead and managing that by mowing it down, keeping it down low, holding some of that moisture because they don't have problems with weeds because their soil's so on point. My situation's a little bit different. I want that high shade down on the soil level so I can choke out that pigweed and the other competition that I have going on in my food plots. So if you guys have never heard of Gary Zimmer, I would highly recommend checking him out. I get a lot of my stuff and my knowledge from him. Some of the testing that I'm doing here this year, some of the different blends, some of the rotations. That guy has a wealth of knowledge. He knows a lot about cover crop farming, regenerative agriculture, and I appreciate being able to go and see him and, and listen to him speak because he's actually making a really big difference when it comes to farming properly. But there's no reason we can't implement his practices that have bumped his yields up exponentially on our food plots. Why can't we do that on our food plots? It's the same concepts. So I urge you guys, test this stuff out. Maybe take a year, don't till, don't spray. Implement a cover crop like this rye. I bet you it'll amaze you at how much moisture this stuff's retaining and how productive just having a very thick cover crop, like a winter rye or a buckwheat, how that chokes out the weed competition. It suppresses that weed competition so you don't have to then spray. That's my goal here is to go completely no chemical on all of my food plots, eventually on this ag field as well. So I wanted to talk about that today. I wanted to show you guys some, some real world examples of how that moisture is getting retained within that soil, what this rye is doing for my food plots, what I'm using it for. A lot of people I don't think know that you can use winter rye and cover crops to choke out weed competition. You don't have to just spray. That's the simple, quick, easy fix that's sold to us. At the end of the day, planting rye is probably a lot cheaper than, than buying a gallon of Roundup. That stuff's not cheap. And the detriments that it's creating within our soil and our ecosystems and all of the different wildlife, there's studies coming out with Roundup ready corn or beans and killing turkeys. There's all of this detrimental stuff to our wildlife population when it comes to this new age concept of farming and, and food plotting and just spray till, spray till, hopefully you get some rain to make something grow, basically sterilizing our soil. We need to be putting back into the soil, giving back to what's giving us a beautiful crop in the fall that we can hunt deer over. Guarantee you, try this stuff out. If you have any questions, give me a holler. I give my cell phone number out for free. I like talking about this stuff. I like helping people. That's what I do, I help people. This is what I'm passionate about. I'm implementing a lot of this new stuff that I find very interesting. How can I produce the most nutrient dense food plots, the most efficient, effective food plots, most attractive food plots, and at the end of the day, protecting this farm. You know, giving back, putting back into this century farm that I'm living on right now. How can I make this better for the following generations to come? That's what we're all about here. Because at the end of the day, like a lot of you guys, I wanna make this property the best that I possibly can so my kids can enjoy it just like I have. And trying out these new concepts, implementing cover crops, I'm enjoying the process, 
seeing the benefits already. If you have any questions, shoot me a message. I'd love to help.